Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say hello to you all the way from France, Paris, France. Matter of fact, we're at my favorite restaurant, La Pierre Steakhouse. I chose this spot because, well, today we're going to talk about wine. Wine 101. Do you have to be a rocket scientist to enjoy wine, to appreciate wine? Do you have to be a rocket scientist? No. What you do need is an expert to guide you through how to appreciate wine. Where are we going to find an expert? You found him. Me. That's right. I'm an expert. You see this medal? 1967. Wine distinction. Robert McDowell. That's right. I was the only one in the whole country who was giving this award for my outstanding, outstanding wine knowledge. And today, I'm going to pass it on to you. If you got wine books on the shelf, throw them away. If you're in school learning about wine, quit. This is all you're going to need to become an expert. All right, so let's get started. I'm in a restaurant. Now, usually when I walk into a restaurant, everybody knows me. I get the best table, I get the best service, and I always get the best wine. That's just how I work. Lots of times you go out to dinner and you get the menu. Oh, you're all flustered. How do I pick a wine? How do I, how do I choose a wine? I'm going to show you a little trick. Here's the wine menu. Open it up. Very simple. Are you looking at countries? Wrong. Are you looking at different grapes? Wrong. How about years? Wrong. When you get the menu, go directly to the most expensive wine. There you go. The most expensive wine. Just happens to be these Grand Cru's over here. I always get the most expensive wine. Now, if you can't afford the most expensive wine in a restaurant, maybe you shouldn't be going out to eat. Today, I chose the most expensive wine. I got a Chateau O'Brien. I got a Mouton Rothschild. I got a Chateau Magos. I got a Chateau Le Tour. And last but not least, I got the Chateau Lafayette. All very good wines. Nothing wrong with any of them. 1997. Which one did I choose? Very simple. I chose the one with the nicest label. That's all you need to know. A very nice label. Very nice bottle of wine. Now, you can't really see the wine in the bottle, can you? It's a dark bottle. So you ask the waiter, you say, can I please have a decanter? I'll bring you over a decanter. What do you need a decanter for? Well, very simple. If you want to see the wine, transfer it from the bottle into a decanter. Now you can see the wine. You can't see it in the bottle. That's the only reason you want to decant the wine so you can see it. There's a little prestige to seeing the wine. All the tables around you are staring at you saying, whoo, he must be an expert. And they can see I'm drinking red wine. There you go. Put the bottle on the table. Make sure the label is facing out so everybody in the restaurant can see now you're drinking the most expensive wine. I always bring my own filter, my own little funnel. Just great. Now, pour the wine from the decanter into the glass. Look at that beautiful glass of wine. Beautiful glass of wine. Now, you got the wine in the glass. Before you even smell it, before you even taste it, before you even order your food, there's a few things you want to do. 
I always bring my little packet here, and I'm going to show you what's in it. First thing you want to do, take the wine's temperature. There's no sense even tasting the wine unless it's the right temperature. A red wine should be at least 62 degrees. I like my red wine at 63 degrees. Say, so wait a little bit. What do you got? 63 degrees. Perfect. Now, if it's 64 degrees, throw it away. If it's 62 degrees, you can drink it. If it's 61 degrees, send it back. The waiter may argue with you, but you know what? You know what you like. I'm telling you what the wine's supposed to be. And you tell the waiter it's supposed to be this temperature. Don't argue. Just send it back. Next thing you want to do, bring yourself some pH tape. Pull yourself off a little bit. What do you need this for? You want to test the pH level in the wine, right? If the pH level is wrong, throw it out. No sense drinking wine where the pH level is wrong. I know you're saying that's a lot of stuff to remember. And that's a lot of stuff to do before you even drink your wine. You know what? You'll appreciate the wine a lot better if it's perfect. Match it up. 6.0. That's exactly what you want. So far, so good, right? Next thing you want to do, listen to the wine. It shouldn't be making any noise at all. If you hear any kind of gurgling or bubbling or foaming, that means it's fermenting. Throw it away. You don't want it. So now the wine has passed all the preliminary tests. Now we can start to appreciate the wine. Now we can start to learn about the wine. So we're going to talk about the five S's. Sight. Swing, smell, taste it, spit it. We're not going to spit today because we're in the restaurant. But if you were at a wine tasting, you would spit it. You're tasting a lot of wine, you don't want to get drunk, right? <laughs> okay, so first thing you want to do is look at the wine. What are you looking for? Well, you're looking for debris.